Welcome to the Pat Sheranian Show and a happy Thanksgiving to you today. Thank you for joining us and having lunch with us. If you're right close by in the Utah Valley area, then you're on 1480 AM KHQN. Thank you for being with us. If you are around the area or as far away as Japan or China or Australia, then you're on pat.utahvalleylive.com. We appreciate you joining us. I do, right off the top, have a Thanksgiving shout out. I got a phone call this morning from my youngest grandchild, and she's in Portland. So Ellis, happy Thanksgiving to you, and Grandma loves you this much. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving day, and to Lincoln and Jason, happy Thanksgiving to you too. Grandma loves you, loves you, loves you. And I've got a grandma behind me, Mary Keith Boyack, and she has brought one of her children and his family with her today, and that's going to be our show. These kids are all great looking. They're all smart, clever, witty. I just met them, so I don't really know, so I'm making it up. So we're going to find out in a few minutes what they can really do, but if they come out of that uh, Keith family, I can tell you there's music somewhere around and poetry. So with that, let me introduce you to Mary Keith Boyack. Hi, Mary. Good to have you with us today. You. Would you like to introduce your son? Yes. I'd, well, I'd like everyone introduced. My son, Bob, he's my only you, boy now. Okay. I have six daughters that sleep on him all the time. Good. He deserves it. But he's actually <laughs> coming to be with us in Thanksgiving. They live in Glendale, California. Great. We appreciate your coming up here. Why didn't you bring your weather and leave it for the winter? I would have been so happy about that. You pull your chair forward, and then you're not, I'm not blocking you, if you will. Okay, would you like him to introduce his children? And with the father's comment about each one, that's oh, always that would be clever great. and witty. He knows, he knows him better than anybody. I have four wonderful children with me today, and my oldest is sitting on my right. His name is Brennan. He's 17 years old. He can tell you a little bit about himself, but Brennan is... Uh, my firstborn child, our, our, the mother is at home. My wife is Kathy, and she's at home today uh, fixing our Thanksgiving dinner. So <laughs> it's just the, just the five of us. But Brennan is our firstborn child, and he's a senior in high school, 17 years old, and, and uh, uh, a great athlete and a great student and a, a great person. And, uh, and where is he going to college? Well, he's been looking at a couple of colleges. He's been looking at um, University of Connecticut and uh, University of Colorado and Stanford and BYU. Of course, <laughs> BYU. <laughs> no, I, I, I wanted to look at Stanford, but he, uh, he's been looking at a few and he's applied at a few. And Brandon, why don't you tell us what you've, tell us about your college, uh, exper your college application and just a little bit about yourself. And you don't have to answer those if you don't want to. Okay. All righty. Um, <laughs> well, as far as college goes, you know, I'm really excited. I'm just trying to enjoy the rest of my senior year. But, um, yeah, my three main choices are BYU. I've grown up a BYU Cougar, of course. I've always loved them. <coughs> and then University of <coughs> Connecticut is my second choice. And then Wake Forest University is another school that I'm looking at. Um, so, you know, it's going to – require a lot of thinking and a lot of pondering on the subject to find out you know what place is right for me and to see where I get in but I'm excited for that and um, a little bit about my myself let's see I am very I have a passion for politics I really enjoy politics can I help you get over that <laughs> 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 someday and then um, but yeah, it just kind of sprouted recently because I joined a program through the California uh, YMCA called Youth in Government. Good, that's yeah. good. And so I, uh, I'm an officer this year in my delegation, and I'm just it's just something that I love to do. And uh, I used to play baseball, but I quit beginning of my senior year so that I could, you know, focus more on this program. So I really love that. So he won't tell about himself, but you can tell how he won the city championship two years in a row <coughs> well, by knocking in the and winning yeah, runs. Yeah, my baseball <laughs> career was fun, but it was time. It was just you know time to let well, it go. Well, I'm excited that you're going into politics because if you can think about that in high school and look at the world the way it is today and what's happened to our U.S. Constitution. <coughs> 
and um, and still want to be <laughs> want to make a change, then my uh, we're behind you. Yeah. We're behind you all the way. I've got a lady that was on last week, and she's going to be coming on with me. I hope once a week. And she talks about the original Constitution, which is nothing like the one we have right now. Mm -hmm. So if you really want to have <coughs> some fun, I'll tell you after the show where you can order a copy of that and find out what it should be and how it was balanced to begin with and how out of balance it is now. Mm -hmm. But congratulations, you have everything you need. You're smart and good looking. What else do you need? <laughs> Thank okay. You. <laughs> All right, um, let's go on around this way to Gavin. Okay, go ahead and hand, hand the microphone. Well, you, you, tell, you tell about him first. Yeah, it's all over well, the place. Uh, <laughs> and then sitting next to uh, his grandmother is Gavin <laughs> Keith Boyack, named after the Keith family here in Provo. And Gavin is the youngest of the four children. He is 12 years old. Gavin is uh, uh, very busy with his schoolwork. He's a scout. He plays baseball and basketball. And he has a lot of friends and is uh, <laughs> um, enjoys the company of uh, the opposite sex. No, no, don't tell on that. He's only 12. <laughs> censor, censor. You know, Bobby told me that if he, if he walked in the school and there was a big crowd down the hall, it's it was because they were all around Gavin. Oh, okay. Yeah, he usually got a crowd around him. So I'm going to hand the microphone to Gavin and just let him... There. Oh, okay. You can just tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, hi, I play baseball and basketball, and I'm very uh, active in our school's activities and sports, such as football, basketball, whatnot. Yeah. And whatnot. I like the whatnot. And um, <laughs> I get very good grades. Um, <laughs> um, it's... Uh, well, I moved to a new school recently, and I've been having lots of fun. I've made a lot of new friends. Good. That's great. I want to know where these kids get all these dimples. Every time they smile, they dimple up. Bob, their grandpa. Really? Mm hmm Interesting. And her mother. Shall I tell you what happens when you get yeah, older? They turn into wrinkles. <laughs> 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 but when you're little, they tell you it's where well, yours kids still look do. good, honey. <laughs> okay. Then we've got Kylie. Um, I'm Kylie. I'm a 10th grader in high school. Um, I play softball, and um, and I sing and play the piano. Very Great. good. You're busy. And how do you handle these four boys? Um, well, I'm used to it, but I guess just, I don't know. I'm adjusted to it, but <laughs> it's not too bad. It is an adjustment. Isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what my daughter used to say. It's an adjustment. <laughs> Well, great. Thank you very much for sharing that. And Dylan? Um, hey, I'm Dylan. Um, I'm 14, and I'm a freshman in high school. Um, what I do, I play uh, baseball and basketball, and um, I also sing and play the piano. And I also act professionally for commercials and TV shows and movies well, and whatnot. talk about that for just a minute, because that's kind of fun. Not everybody <coughs> gets to do that. Okay. Um, well, it started about three years ago. Um, I went to this acting class, and uh, the teacher was really nice, so I decided to stay with it. And um, I showcased for agents, um, and then I got a call back for a, from a couple. And then um, I decided to choose which one I thought fit me. And, um, and then what agents do is they just send you out on auditions. And, um, yeah, and so what I've done, I've done... Um, commercials for Disney Channel and Target. I did a Nintendo 3 3DS, the new the new um the new DS that came out a couple months ago, I guess. I didn't add for that. Um Phineas and Ferb. So yeah. Are you enjoying it? Yeah. It's a lot of fun. Ask him where he was last Thanksgiving. Where were you last Thanksgiving? Okay. Last Thanksgiving, I was in Thailand and I shot a movie. Um I w it wasn't a it wasn't a big role, but it was it was at least a role. Um, it was The Hangover Two, and um, kind of rowdy movie, but uh, <laughs> had to take it, I guess. Um, Whatever pays the bills. Yeah. <laughs> so we, um, well, wait, my mom did, and I did flew your parents over. Have to go with you. One of your yes, parents, my yeah. my mom went with us. She had to chaperone. Yeah. So they flew you there. Yeah. Me, that was that my was mom and the I. whole thing. Yeah. I have. Uh, Kent in the other room went to Thailand on his mission. Cool. So, yeah, you guys can speak to each other in Thai, right? 
No, wrong. <laughs> um, a sentence, maybe, I guess. Um, I have a grandson that's an actor, too, and he really enjoys it. He's here locally and it does cool. a lot of stuff at the Hale Theater and the Sarah Theater. Cool. And uh, it's kind of fun. So is this what you're going to do forever and earn a big living? And I think that's what it's going to be like. nice Tom Cruise? Yeah, I <laughs> guess so. <laughs> well, that's great. And how do you feel about uh, having a brother in showbiz? I think it's really cool. Um, you know, I kind of get to show him off sometimes. That's he, fun. Yeah, it's a nice <laughs> little it's a nice little icebreaker in a conversation. <laughs> but so he, he's acting, and you have all the girls. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Is that yeah, the way this breaks that's, down. That's how I kind of worked it for a little while. Uh, let's see. No, yeah, we we really support him. It's a lot of fun. He's really good at it. I take him to auditions and stuff, and good. I see like he's he's prepared, but he doesn't. It, it hasn't consumed his life to the point where he's like worried about it. He just goes in, does his thing. He's good at it. He walks out and he's like, all right, let's go. I'm going to go hang out with my friends. I, I think one of the keys to being really successful in show business, <coughs> and because I went through this, is it's a job. This is not your life. It's something you go to and you take what who you are to the role and then you become that person while you're there. And when you leave the stage or the camera, you, you leave it there because you do have a life. People that take themselves too seriously, yeah. forget it. <coughs> so you won't get there, I'm sure. You sound like you're very grounded. He is. Good. That's good. Bobby, would you tell that story about the boat show? You're going to have to pull around me, Bobby. Last year. Okay. We, um, we, when was that? Was that the, for Christmas? It was, it was for last Christmas. Last Christmas. Year. And it was down in Huntington Harbor, down in California. Yes, we lived on Lido Isle for many years. It's called the uh, b Christmas uh, Boat Parade. You know all about it, I then. do. It's wonderful, but our audience doesn't, so go, because well, it's great. Well, it's, it's in the Huntington Harbor down in Huntington Beach in California, and they, uh, the residents that live down there decorate their boats, and they go all out to make them you know, lights and decorations and everything. And we were invited last year to go on the boat parade, and so we went on the boat of a friend of mine who had it all decorated, and he had... Um, speakers all set up and a microphone and and you know full sound system and and well, they have Christmas trees they have Santa Clauses they have nativity scenes they have music because you're in the Huntington Harbor but I lived in the Newport Beach Harbor so we did the same thing and the boats cruise around us <coughs> many 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 boats up to 100 boats or many or, boats yeah. in a procession and uh, so we were out on this boat, and we were we were touring around, and we were playing Christmas music, and it didn't take Dylan very long to find the microphone, and <laughs> picked it up, and first he started singing along with the music that was on the boat to the Christmas carols, and and uh, <coughs> sort of augmenting those carols vocally, and then uh, there was a, the shore was lined with people who were all watching the boat parade go by, and so. <laughs> Dylan started working the crowd a little bit and joking around with them and wishing them Merry Christmas. And at one point he was, he he had all their attention and he said, when I say Merry, you say Christmas. Merry! And then the whole shore, Christmas. the whole shore, yeah, just <laughs> roared back Christmas. And so it, we were all laughing at Dylan and sort of uh, in awe of his ability to move improvise. the crowd. Improvise. Yeah. To move the crowd and to improvise, yeah. It was fun. Well, we're going to do a little improvising right now. Um, Mary Keith Boyack, who's the grandmother here and the mother of Bob, is going to teach these children a new game that they have. Um, she has grown up in in her family and then taught her children and now her grandchildren. So here you go, Mary, you're on. Okay. The game is the gratitude game. We not only play it at Thanksgiving, we play it whenever I can, I'm in a car with enough people that we can play it. And um, everyone does this around their table at Thanksgiving, I hope they do, is to tell what they're grateful for. But in, in this version is, uh, so we can all have a turn faster, is that the first time around you get to say what you're grateful for in one word, one word only. The second time around you can use a sentence. The third time around you can describe it. You can tell all you want to about it. For example, if it were my turn. <laughs> you get to take your turn first. <laughs> I would say my one word would be 
babies. Okay. Okay. Let's yeah. Let's start around. You start, Pat. Okay. Love. I'm grateful for love. I'm grateful for freedom and freedom to choose. <laughs> freedom. One word. One word. One, One word. word. Freedom. Okay. <laughs> I'm grateful for friends. No, I'm grateful for friends. And I'm grateful for um, family. <laughs> Check mine. Um, <clears throat> I'm grateful for um, traveling. Okay, good. Okay, now yeah, this make a sentence, right? <coughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I am grateful for an opportunity to do something I really enjoy doing, um, and which is work. Except this is fun. <laughs> Being on the radio and streaming is fun. I am uh, very appreciative of the freedom that I have and that I enjoy in this country and the opportunity that we all have to choose and make our own decisions. I work with a girl from Pakistan who has relatives that do not have that freedom. Our friends change, but many of the ones that I have have been there for me for a very long time, so I'm very grateful for them. Okay. Do I still get to talk about babies? Yeah. This time I get to say, because they're soft and pink and they smell good, <laughs> and I can cuddle them and love them all I want to. And usually, if they're little enough, they still like me. <laughs> I understand that. <laughs> I'm grateful for being um, like a kid, just like meeting new people, um, my friends, and, and being a kid, getting in trouble, making mistakes. <laughs> it's we're not it's all fun. <laughs> it's all good. Um, I'm grateful for people who are there for me uh, and who support me whenever I need them. Um, I'm grateful for my opportunity to be an actor professionally because <clears throat> um, it's just really fun and there's a lot of great people that you meet. So, yeah. Is he supposed to say something about traveling? No. Oh, you don't have to. That's no, it can be, you can change to the subject. Just <laughs> open your hearts and say all the things you're okay, grateful for. Okay, what is for. the third thing now? You can describe whatever you, it is you're grateful for. More. I just did that. Well, I'll do it again. Do, it, do more things. <laughs> well, then I'll change my subject. I'm really grateful for having had four sons and a daughter who's watching over us from heaven, and we're grateful for that. I'm grateful for 15 grandchildren. Oh boy, now I'm giving it away. And I have um, three grandchildren, and then one of my grandsons and his wife had twin boys seven months ago. And now I have another grandson and his wife, and they're expecting another set of twins in April. Fun. And then another granddaughter who's having another baby, grandbaby, or great-great-grandchildren I'm talking about. Anyway, I counted up. I'm getting close to 30 grand, grands and greats, and it's just wonderful. And I'm grateful for the spouses that live with them and put up with them. Um, I am grateful for... Um, all the blessings that I have enjoyed over the years and perhaps now is really one of the happiest times of my life because I'm doing something I thoroughly enjoy doing. Every day I have the opportunity of meeting with friends and sharing the information with you over the air. And also it's a way of saying to all of my grandchildren and my children, I love you very, very much, especially I am so thankful for you this day. <coughs> Well, I just have to go say immediately that I'm grateful for my family, which is here before me, except for my wife, and, uh, and the chance to spend Thanksgiving with my mom, and which we don't often get to do. And uh, just grateful that I have been entrusted with such one, four wonderful kids who really possess many qualities that, uh, that I am constantly in awe of. And so I'm grateful for them. and and for their mother, and just for the family relationships that we all enjoy. Thank you, that's very sweet, I appreciate that. I'm grateful that I go to a Catholic high school because I have been exposed to uh, situations and predicaments that I'd say most adults haven't been exposed to, and I've learned of different faiths, 
religions, perspectives, political views that a lot of people around me aren't don't get to be exposed to. And I feel like I have a unique perspective on life because of the just the diversity that I've been around my four years. So that's what I'm grateful for. That's really interesting. So you're a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints going to a Catholic school. That would give you a total different outlook on some things, for sure. Well, that's great. I love that. Very kind and very giving. Thank you. Mary. Well, I know the main theme here today is is uh, family, and I don't like to be a dead horse, but uh, I have to <laughs> boast. Are we talking dead horses here, Mary, all of a sudden? What are you talking about? <laughs> no, the subject... Uh, it, it's, it can't be overdone as far as I'm concerned. I have eight wonderful <sighs> children. I'm going to cry um, because, um, and I tell every one of them every time I talk to them, I'm so thankful to Heavenly Father because he let you come and live with me. And I have 46 grandchildren and almost 50 great-grandchildren. And I'm here to tell you, it doesn't get old, it doesn't diminish. Each one that comes is unique and special and absolutely wonderful, and they just get better and better. And we have one right now that we've been saying prayers for. It was born five days ago and is having trouble. They don't know whether yet whether he's going to make it all the way. And uh, I'm grateful that we have the capacity to pray and to supplicate the Lord in all our needs. And now you know why <laughs> Mary is my friend. <laughs> She's so loving and so darling, and uh, years ago she and her sisters adopted me into the family. Thank goodness I've really enjoyed that uh, the relationship. <laughs> And uh, she's not telling all. She's talking about being a grandma and a mother, which is great and wonderful. But because of her experiences, where's your book, Mary? Oh, here it is. Um, every time I say <laughs> this, you're supposed to lift this book. <laughs> this is Mary's new book, The Code and the Crown, by Mary Keith Boyack, and it's a story of Joseph of Egypt. Now, it took her only 25 years to write it, <laughs> and then when the, we got it published last year, and it is still hot off the press, so you can buy this at any LDS bookstore. Yes, Desert Book. And you can get it at Desert Book, and you can buy it online on uh, Amazon. So it's there, and it is a great book, a great story, and I highly recommend it. Hold it back up, Mary. It's your book, and every time I say your name, you're supposed to pop this up in the air. <laughs> okay, Mary Boyack and her wonderful, wonderful book. And kids, if you haven't read it, read it. It's a great adventure. She's taken a true story and dramatized it, as so many people have, but the characters in there are real, and when they're not, she lets you know which ones are and which ones aren't, but it makes a great read. So Mary, congratulations to you again. She's also the author of a number of poems, which she's going to share with us, of books, and you're going to read some poems here later in the show. Mm -hmm. And uh, these books that were written, uh, some with her sisters. In fact, all of them, I guess, with mm -hmm. your sisters. And she's going <laughs> to be talking about that. And we're definitely, definitely having a family moment here during this hour. Uh, this is what it's about. And I just want to say a couple of things. If you're alone today on Thanksgiving, um, know that you're not. Know that there are people that probably are thinking of you and worrying about you and being concerned. And I have lived alone a long time, and I learned years ago. You can get up in the morning and be very happy about whatever your circumstances are, or you can be really unhappy about them. It's all up to you. You can create the success that you want. You can create the, um, the day. It can turn out just the way you want it because you have been created by a creator, and you have that gift within you. So if today isn't working out exactly like you wanted it to, change it you have the ability to enjoy whatever you are doing today. Be grateful for the years you've had behind you and the years yet to come, because sooner or later you realize you have the power to be successful at anything you choose to do. Okay, let's go around. Let's finish the thing and then do it one more time because I have spe something special I need to ask okay. on my next turn. Gavin, you're up. All right. I'm grateful for... Um, actually sports and like my team and my teammates because like the farther we go into the season like the more I realize how important they are and how much it isn't about one person and like 
how if like your best your best player is like your worst player is just as good as your best player and it doesn't matter like you cheer him on don't put him down and you all work together and you don't know like i've been i've been playing baseball with my friends for a number of years and um it's just been really good for me like we've learned a lot of things and we've helped a lot of kids so great good. thank you clap clap that's worth a clap 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 <laughs> that was very good all right um it. i'm grateful for music because um music is what brings us our singers and our dancers and um and I don't, music just makes me happy and it's something I can listen to whenever I want and uh, it'll always it'll always be there and it's just it's just a good thing to have. Can I tell something? Maybe Bobby ought to tell this, but I would get a phone call when Kylie was three years old. She was three years old and on the other end of the phone would be Bobby and he'd say, Mom, listen to this. And then he'd hold the <laughs> hold the microphone or the phone over to Kylie, three, and she would sing with all her heart. Every note would be perfect, every breath would be adorable, and it oh, about killed me. <laughs> it was so great, and she didn't even know that. I told her that the other day, and she didn't even know we used to do that. She didn't remember. I should remind all teenagers that might be listening to us today that you don't need to buy a grandma a present ever because the nicest present she could have is a note from you or sing her a song on the telephone <laughs> or come and sit next to her and listen to her talk about her life as a child. Yeah, Those are that's great right. gifts. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I'm grateful for service. Um, we did a project um, through the Boy Scouts and through the church actually. Uh, helping hands and we helped um a lot of we we helped pick up trash and we helped um two years ago we helped like totally redo an elementary school paint the fences um and pick up more trash so um yeah i'm just grateful for service because it's kind of what makes the world go around if you don't do service for others then the world wouldn't be um what it is how do you feel when you given service like that um i feel like i've done something good for someone else like um like they can benefit from what i do good feelings great yeah. these are good does you know can't does can't have one he wants to tell uh well i'm grateful for my mother <laughs> <laughs> that's good and we're not going to tell who she is <laughs> okay um i think it's time we had a song or some music for that's that kids. was going to be my okay. next thing i'm grateful good? for children that like music like to perform in your family they have to yeah they do they, we audition them in heaven <laughs> <laughs> before they come down here <laughs> and if they made it I, I should mention that mary was for many years in a choir by the name of uh i was in the utah symphony chorus for 23 years for 23 years. but before that i think i came out of the womb singing, <laughs> singing. <laughs> before i could talk i could sing well Dylan came out of the womb singing, and he's still doing it. Right. So how about it, you guys? Can you show it. Can you can you make can you make these two grandmas really happy? <laughs> okay, and we've got what have you got there? Ukulele or? We have a ukulele. All right, go for it, kid. Show off. All right. <laughs> Belt it out. What are you going to be singing? Oh, we're going to be singing. We're going to sing "I'm Yours" by Jason Mraz. <clears throat> okay. Oh, they can see it. <coughs> Sing it loud so the mic will pick you up. Okay. Well, you done done me, and you bet I felt it. I tried to beat you, but you're so hot that I melted. Fell right through the cracks. And now I'm trying to get back. Before the cool done run out, I'll be giving it my best. This, and nothing's going to stop me but divine intervention. I reckon it's to get my turn. To win some or learn some, but I won't hesitate no more, no more. This cannot wait. I'm yours. Do 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 do
All right. Ooh. Um, yeah, clap, 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 clap for sure. Um, you know what? You need to stand up and do a song, either by yourself or, or together. So let's get this, this stand back in here because you had both had trouble sitting still there. So let's get you up on your feet. Think of something else you can do for us, okay? okay. And knock it out of the ballpark. So let me yeah. this over in the middle. <coughs> Let's get Don't this back using your mic back up on here, guys. <laughs> get your mic on there. Kind of, there you go. Let's try not to hang each other in these court. And then cut it loose. That was not over the top, so will you knock it out of the ballpark for me? Because I know you're capable of doing that. What's the other one you're going to do? <coughs> oh. Right um, into the camera. Do you want to use your ukulele? No. no. Okay, here we go. This one's acapella. Um, Rhythm of, <laughs> Rhythm of Love by uh, the Plain White Cheese. Right. Okay. Okay. My, my head is <laughs> stuck in the clouds. She begs me to come down, says, boy, quit fooling around. I told her I love the view from up here. Warm sun, winds in my ear will watch the world from above as it turns to the rhythm of love. We may only have tonight, but till the morning sun, you're mine, oh mine. Play the music low and sway to the rhythm of love. Mm. All right, clap, 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 clap. You got another one? Uh. <laughs> Dylan, what do you got? No, you do, eh? Um, I don't think I do. How <laughs> what did you What did you sing, Dill? What did you sing for that last audition? Yeah. Um, what did I? Oh, solo. Okay. Or do the. Go. All right. Doing the right into the camera. Lots of energy. Never mind, I will find someone like you. I wish nothing but the best for you. So don't forget me. I beg, I remember you say. Sometimes it lasts in love, but sometimes it hurts instead. All right, American Idol, look for this kid. Woo. He needs to be out there next go round. Thank you very, very much. Dylan, you want to move the mic for me? Great. Uh, that's really hard to do if any of you are singers. You know that. If you're not, then I'm telling you, without uh, musical accompaniment, just to on the spot be asked to sing. And um, great good audition so if you're out there watching this is dylan where did we get to on our game i think we finished, we finished. it yeah. did we did mm -hmm. we go around three times yep yeah. we did okay um <laughs> i'm going to take a little of my own time now and tell you that um i'm also grateful that i had in our family, we were eight children, four girls and four boys, and all four of the girls wrote poetry. Not necessarily the same kind, but when Pro Provo City asked us to come and, because they knew we all read poetry, and read some for the city, we got our heads together and said, uh, let's all put in the poems so that we have written about the family and about growing up in Provo and Alberta, which was our homestead. And um, and we did, and they loved us, and they came up after and said, where's your book? And we didn't have one yet, but we had a lot of spin-offs, and so when they asked us to read in St. George at the Writers' Convention, the Poet Laureate of Minnesota was the guest poet. And he said, after we had read and he had heard us, he said, where's your book? So. <laughs> here's the book. Here's the book. And what's the name of it, Mary? It's called Bread and Milk and Music. 
that's how we were raised on bread and milk and music. Three sisters' voices, Karen Keith Gibson, Helen Keith Beeman, and Mary Keith Boyack. And we lost Helen last April, but Karen and I still read. And I would like to read a couple of things out of this book, if that's okay. Sure. Get your glasses. Uh, Where are they? (laughs) Where did I put them? (laughs) Here they are. Okay. Um, And I'll try to read one about gratitude to be in keeping with the Thanksgiving Day. Thank of the subject here. Um, it's right here close somewhere. Okay. By the way, Mary and uh, her uh, sister, uh, they're both available now to, if you would like a reading at your home or your church event or your corporation or whatever you have. And she also does a review on her book, on her book, The Coat and the Crown. You have to lift it when I say it. <laughs> the coat, yeah, have, have help there. Yeah, you, Gavin, Hold that's your job. Camera. Hold it up to the camera. We talk okay. about it, put it okay, in front of the camera. Okay, Mary's new book, The Coat and the Crown, Joseph e- of Egypt. It's just hot off the press a month or so ago, and it's available at Deseret Book or on Amazon. So, okay, now she's reading from a book that the three sisters put together. Right. Okay, this is called um, called Gray Blue Galvanized. The day, the sky, and the wash tub are all the same color. Mama scrubs our clothes on a rutted washboard, then hangs them out to dry. Alan brings bucket loads of fresh water from the irrigation ditch, refills the tub. Beverly's job is to bring up the mason jars from the cobwebbed cellar and make each one clean enough to hold peaches for winter eating. Her nine-year-old hand fits through the small jar mouth. Kneeling in the dirt before the tub, she scours and rinses each one carefully. Alan chops kindling, starts a fire in the wood stove. Mama fills the containers with fruit she has peeled, puts on the curlid jars, curlids, submerges them in the canning kettle, and boils until sanitized and sealed. Grandpa comes by, gives us a stewing hen. I help Beverly take the dry clothes from the line, sprinkle, roll them, so they'll be just right for ironing tonight. We set the flat iron on the back of the range to heat. Alan fills the tub again, this time with water heated in the reservoir attached to the Monarch stove. Maybe we will fill it twice more so that everyone, cleanest to dirtiest, will get a chance to bathe. Daddy, covered with dust from working at the Tintic Standard Mine, will have to be last. Tomorrow, we'll put fresh clothes on our clean bodies and go to church. After church, Mama will serve us chicken and dumplings, homemade bread, and cobbler made from fresh Alberta peaches. Dad will read scriptures, lead us in family prayer, thanking God for our abundance. Sorry. You almost got through that without <laughs> crying. <laughs> That's so tender and it's so special today and reminds us of grandparents and great grandparents and how they lived where it was hard, hard work to put on any meal, let alone a meal for 30 or 40 people. That really was complicated. Do you have another one, Mary? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Here's one. I, oh, let me read this one first. This one about uh, my brother Bill. He was such a lively little kid. Billy Keith, getting yelled at, spanked, sent to bed without supper, never dampens his recusant smile, his unflagging good nature. On this summer day, like many at the Brown House, Mama is wondering how she's going to feed her brood of six. Daddy's gone to Provo to look for work. Billy's shout brings us to the stoop. He points under the house. A white rabbit! A white rabbit. We often have jackrabbit for a meal, but we think albino will be a rare treat. To block the escape of our potential feast, Alan assigns watchers at either outlet. A lot of shouting, a few sightings, and suddenly the hare is there before Billy and me. My brother pounces, comes up with the prize, but also a piece of wood with a nail 
piercing his hand, pushing up skin on the top side. I don't remember dinner, but I'll never forget the nail print. Beautiful, Mary. Uh, this one, these you have written, or? Yeah, these are mine. These are yours. Okay, we appreciate this. And this one, Alan's in charge. He was always in charge. He was the oldest. Our parents have gone to Provo with Grandpa. They left the Model T at home. Alan, age 12, barely turned 12. My Daniel Boone knows the names of rocks, can tell all the varieties of lizards, find ground squirrels, prairie dogs, snakes. If he'd let me, I'd follow him on all of his excursions. Today, he does. He includes us kids in on a conspiracy. He knows how to drive. We all pile in. To look grown up, Alan puts on Dad's hat. He takes the gravel road part way, then wheels out across the sagebrush. That's when Beverly starts screaming and doesn't stop. We miss ditches, circle haystacks. He shows us where he finds arrowheads and how the Indians chip them from flint. Puts the car back in its exact spot. It wasn't us that told on him. It was Mr. Miller wondering why Dad looks so short. <laughs> <laughs> That's great, Mary. Thank you. <clears throat> You're watching the Pat Sheranian Show, and my guest today is Mary Keith Boyack and her family. <coughs> we're very grateful to have them with us on this Thanksgiving Day, and we're grateful for you. We hope that your day is going the way that you want it to and that there's a turkey in your oven, and that you're not just a turkey. Okay, so have a really fun time today, whether you're with family or you're alone. Give blessings that we live in a free country. Uh, be grateful for those, um, those blessings. Um, I also want to mention tomorrow on the, uh, the show, I will have Helene Holt with me. She also is an author, and we're going to be talking about her book, Exiled, which has been um, out on the shelf for a number of years. It's still a great story of John Lathrop and how he pioneered so many things in his, uh, the generations that have come after him. We're going to be talking about that. She has about five new manuscripts. Uh, all of them are uh, movie-worthy, and so we're going to be sharing that information with you. So be sure and join us tomorrow, and of course next Monday we'll uh, be moving forward and uh, have the programs one right after the other. Thank you again if you're on pat.utahvalleylive.com or if you're on KHQN. 1480 a.m. We're grateful that you're with us today. If you're driving a car, be safe. And we've got uh, another 20 minutes to go, so we're going to do some more stuff here. Well, we could play the... the. Uh, oh, I want to do the... We forgot with the introductions to do the little game, uh, game of who are you. Okay, I'm just going to ask another question, too. Um, what does... Because uh, today we end Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving begins and it ends in a day. And then for whatever reason, we start right with Christmas, which has become very, very commercial. So I would like these kids who seem to be very grounded, Mary and Bob, to talk about what Christmas means to you, what it really means to you. I'm not talking about the presents under the tree, but what Christmas really means to you. Do you want to do the other first or do that? I, I would like to do this Christmas game yeah, because um, I want to tell a I want to go first because I want to tell about my great kids. We, when they were growing up, we had nothing, not much money, not much of anything. And in fact, one Christmas, they got one present each. But you know what they did with that one present? We had this wonderful old guy in our, in our uh, ward, and he decided it was his job to sort of take care of us. It, it was Brother Anderson. And he had already brought the toys over, and he brought a... Um, trucks and erect or something for the boys and brought uh, dishes for the little girls and uh, I can't remember what else and they knew that w that was what they were getting for Christmas but there was a family across the hill whose house burned down just a little while before Christmas and they decided on their own I'm not going to get through this to give their toys to them for Christmas to the other family that didn't And they have did. We took everything we could gather you up. You were part of that, Bob? Yes. I was part of that and and several other uh, Christmas experiences that I can remember where we would uh, go caroling or 
sing to uh, families that were in need and taking baskets. And it seems like we were, uh, we did that, um, some aspect of that every Christmas, where we would go caroling or we would um, give somebody a basket or it was a good lesson for my mother to teach us all, uh, you know, to, to, as my son mentioned, service and giving of yourself to others and, and uh, really uh, catching the true Christmas spirit. Great. Thank you. Okay, Mary, what else? Well, let them tell. Okay, uh, Brennan, right? Did I do that right? Yeah. Um, Christmas. Well, obviously there's the whole thing about recognizing the, uh, the birth of Jesus Christ. But I, I kind of take Christmas as more of a, it just, it's one of those times of year where I just get a feeling and it's just so, I feel so tranquil and so at peace all the time. And so that's just a lot of what Christmas is to me is just being happy and being at peace with yourself. And that's just, that's, that, that's why I'm waiting for the season to come up. Great thinking, Brennan. Thank you. Let's go um, to Gavin. Well, Christmas to me really means just like uh, being being nice to people. Like you can't really like other people who aren't as fortunate as you. Just like giving to them. Just even just being a friend can really benefit someone. You know, none of this has been scripted. <laughs> if you've joined us today. Uh, we started out with Let's Just Go and uh, off the top of our heads. Now these kids could have said, bah humbug, I don't want to deal with this and I'm not coming anyway. But they came down to the studio in Provo. They did say that. <laughs> <laughs> they got here. And uh, they've got all the right answers, which I really appreciate. Um, Kylie? Um, Christmas? Um I don't know, like Brennan said, you just it's just kind of that feeling, that good feeling that you get. But I think um, just being with people that you love, like people around you, I think that's what what's really important to me. And the aspect of uh, Savior, too, and the Savior. And I think it's just like the time of year that everyone should be happy and um, along with Thanksgiving, thankful for great good answer thank you um <clears throat> christmas to me is always the happiest time of the year i always feel like i'm like always in a good mood um and then there's that always that all the christmas music like whenever i'm feeling down i just play some christmas music and then i feel better and um pretty much what everyone else said just being around family and um being around people you love so it's really not about the toys it's not about the uh electronics it's Not nice really. to get those but it's really if they were all taken away what would you have that you all want it would be family family would be your family that you uh, want to be with i appreciate that answer thank you very much um having mentioned that can we spontaneously sing a christmas carol mm -hmm. sure um do you know what i'd Everybody. like to do before that okay yeah, I think probably every every LDS family in the whole world does this, but I would like us to sing "I'm a Child of God." Oh, wonderful! Still, still, we, in we the do have people that watch that are not uh, members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints. But that's and who so we are. That's who we are. And so, um, if I sing, I will ruin you. So, <laughs> <laughs> mine is strictly shower singing. So, uh, group up on the microphones, and um, Dad, you're on. Well, I think the kids, uh, I think we should have the quartet of the kids do it. I'm a child of God. Uh, and the dad. Okay, so, uh, Gavin, Here's take this. All right. Okay. And you guys you just, you, oh, oh, they're going to stand Mary, up. Mary, Mary, take it. Uh, Dylan, get the mic off of Mary. Okay. Off your grandma's mic. Oh. Off the stand. Oh, really? You're going to take me away? Yeah. <laughs> they're going to You're being overshadowed, Mary. Okay. <laughs> All right. Do we really all want to get this? I can't kill you. What is this? Sing it out. Wait, you're trying to find the form here. Okay. Group up a little bit. Here, scoot back a little bit because this thing doesn't go up. Here we go. And. I am a child of God. And he has sent me here, has given me an earthly home with parents 
kind and dear. Lead me, guide me, walk beside me, help me find the way. Teach me all that I must do to live with him someday. This is a nice this is a nice thing. This is a nice thing. Sorry if I crack up in the middle. Okay, here we go. Okay, what are we singing? Um, a jingle bug? Yeah, like three percent. Um jingle bugs, it's easy. Dashing through the snow in a one horse open sleigh. O'er the fields we go, laughing all the way. Ha, ha, ha! Bells and bells ring, making spirits rise. What fun it is to ride and sing on a sleighing song tonight. Oh, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Hey! Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Thank you very much. Um, everybody settle back down. We've got too many mics on that side of the room. Bob, come back over here, and uh, let's get Gavin's microphone from him. <laughs> they, they, they're having the giggles here. I, I have another poem I want to read. Okay. This is about when we were talking about Kylie. That's what this was for. But, um, well, it, you'll see what happens. I'll just read it. I went to visit them I went to their church and this family. this family this California family and this is what I heard <laughs> is called unlikely debut the choir opens the program with how great thou art the first speaker counsels us to keep to be our brother's keeper they announce another musical number a white-haired grandpa known to be retired from the Hollywood Musicians Union local 47 having played bass with all the greats, steps up for his first vocal great, uh, endeavor. His granddaughter, in a red satin dress with cherubic face and dimples that match his, stands next to him. They begin, her pure penetrating tones delivered with confidence and accuracy, set the pace. Grandpa follows, finds her volume level, and his bass timber mellow and engaging. The old man and the little girl render prayer words in counter melodies, then meld a harmony that resolves supplication, sending a tingle through the audience. The sacredness of the meeting prohibits applause, but the collective dabbing of cheeks cannot deny the effect. A pair of stars is born. That is lovely, thank you. Were you guys there that day mm -hmm. when that happened? Yes. When that went on, that's a good feeling. Well, we still got about uh, eight minutes. What would you like to do, Mary? Uh, let's hold your book up again. Okay, the coat and the crown, the coat and the crown, <laughs> Joseph of Egypt, the coat and the crown. There we go. I, can I just say that um, when I wrote this, I was told to write it, and I was just sort of. Well, taking you need to clarify that a little bit. Uh, well, okay. One day, inspired maybe. One day, I was word. at a loss in my life and at a very low point, and I stamped my foot and mm -hmm. said, "Heavenly Father, mm -hmm. what do you want from me? What do you expect? What am I supposed to do?" And it wasn't. It was because I had no money, but this has nothing to do with money. The answer that came in my head was, "Write the story of Joseph." And I stopped and said, "Well, that was." an audacious thought Mary just because it's your favorite subject and you've studied it all your life and collected everything you can find on it and told it to your children as bedtime stories <laughs> has nothing to do with this but it wouldn't go away 
it just kept coming in my head right the story of Joseph so it was a long time in coming because I I fought it I um, said oh I can't do that I don't like to write it's not my thing and I'm not you know if there's other people experts that should be writing this but it wouldn't go away and every time I would ask a question like well how do I handle his wife because there's only one sentence in Genesis and (laughs) I'd go to sleep at night and there it would be in a dream the whole night in the daytime I was still seeing movies in my mind so I started saying well yeah I could write it like that yeah that would work (laughs) Anyway, and through a lot of argument and a lot of experiences and a lot of miracles, it finally got written. Showed it to my sister, Helen, and she says, this is good, Mary. This is the skeleton. Now you have to put the meat on the bones. Well, it took me another 25 years to get all the meat on the bones. Hold the book up again. <laughs> and and it, one of my arguments was, I can't write about something I've never seen. How do I know where Joseph walked and what he saw? And two months later, my friend Abby called me and said, Mary, my husband has booked a tour of the Holy Land, and he can't go. Would you mind taking his place? And the man who has led our little tour, the tour leader, had been asked by the general authorities to write the definitive story Genesis story of Joseph to go in a series of scriptures, studies, books that you, they were you, doing. You knew you were on your mission then. Well, he <laughs> he led the way because he was looking for where Joseph walked, and he would bribe the tour guides and the officials, and we would get into places where tourists were not allowed, and we were able to see everything we needed to see, so I had no more excuses. <laughs> I had to come home and write the book. But my, what I what I started out to say was I didn't appreciate it at the time because I was just a, a, a helper getting it done. But now when I look back at look at it, it's a pattern for young people to follow because Joseph was a real hero, not the kind we have today. He was a perfect hero and not only that but for the state our world is in right now and we were maybe facing famine and very difficult times he had the answer for that too this is a great book the coat and the crown joseph of egypt you can buy it in a desert bookstore anywhere in your community or you can buy it on amazon and uh, it is a good read it's a good present uh, to have all of these kids if they haven't read it they're going to And I want to give a shout out to my oldest son, Mark Vorkink, in Diamond Bar, California. Uh, Happy Thanksgiving, Mark, to you and your family. Appreciate your watching today. Uh, Of course, by now you know this is my good friend, Mary Keith Boyack. Uh, We've had more fun than two people should have together (laughs) and uh, enjoyed each other tremendously over the years. And um, she has one of her sons with her. She's lost one son. He's watching over us from heaven, too. And uh, he's got his four children. His wife is home cooking the turkey, which they're eager to get to. <laughs> and uh, so we're going we're gonna to get out of here and let you guys go. Uh, give yourselves a round of applause. You did a great job today. We appreciate your being here. Thanks for having us. I mean, you're certainly welcome to be here and come back again. In fact, every time you come up here, it's required now that you come on my show. Happy Thanksgiving to you out in the uh, public uh, listening audience and viewing audience wherever you are we hope that you're with someone that you love and if you're not with someone you love go find someone to read a story to spend some time to a shut in somebody that needs you and i promise you you'll feel better and if you need a place to come come to my house oh dear be careful everybody (laughs) might be there (laughs) Uh, thanks again for being with us on khqn 1480 am and pat.utahvalleylive.com Again, we appreciate you. Have a safe, wonderful Thanksgiving. Bye-bye.